Greetings and salutations, boys and girls, ladies and germs, everyone watching. It is your host with the most, Paul Plant 2, back with a brand new video. And today I am adding some more plants to my food forest. So I'm gonna be adding some trees and a nice little shrub layer. Someone mentioned I should throw in some vining plants. I will be doing that as well. This is an ever growing project. And obviously I can't do everything in a day to establish a huge permaculture, self-sustaining, bountiful and thriving food forest. So we're just taking it one step at a time, baby. And this is episode two of the plan to food forest. Remember guys, Earth is my planet. Earth is my planet. So as you guys can see, man, we actually have our first harvest in the one year old food forest. Actually, this little element isn't even a year installed yet, but we have a fat, juicy peach. Just look at this dude swinging, hanging, and looking delicious. We actually have two of them, man, and one got tossed to the ground, so sad, but we're gonna throw this guy in the old gullet and see what it's tasting like. Bro, sweet, succulent, juicy. Let's go! My God. Okay guys, so first things first, man, we're gonna throw in some blackberries today. These are called the Caddo or Cato blackberries, however you enunciate and pronunciate. Regardless, these are gonna be a nice shrub species to go in the shrub layer of the food forest. So as I said previously, anytime you start a food forest, you have to have your layer. So I have an overstory of oak trees, understory of fruiting trees, below that is a shrub layer, then there's like ground covers, flowers, and vines. So we're starting off from the bottom and working our way up today with the blackberries. Let's get them in. All right, first and foremost, shout out the University of Arkansas, of Arkansas. They came out with this amazing variety known as the Caddo blackberry. This is a highly productive variety and it came out in 2019 if I am correct now usually blackberries need trellising but this is actually an erect rendition so it might not but I'll still probably throw in some trellises after the fact now of course I had to plant a couple of blackberry bushes and these do grow well in zones five through nine so I spaced them about three and a half feet apart that way they have enough room to grow and flourish speaking of flourishing the soil type definitely needs to be well draining and fertile speaking of fertility you guys asked if my soil was good bro look at those worms in it I don't need to add worms I got worms and fertility for days but yes these need to be placed in some well draining soil so I do have kind of a clay based sandy soil so I planted them a little bit above ground level that way they could drain profusely but I cannot wait for a couple of months from now in midsummer to August to harvest some of these butamous blackberries and chunk them in my mouth. Amazing. So we got the two blackberries in the ground. Can't wait to see these dudes grow up and flourish and thrive. But next up, you guys know it's time to work our way up in the layers and we're throwing in a Meyer lemon tree. So in my previous video, I planted kumquat, grapefruit, clementine and lime. So of course, what would a food forest be without the lemon as well? Just chunk them in. All right, so we're throwing in the Maya lemon. The origin, country of origin is China. China. And this dude will produce some very delicious and nutritious limons. You guys know, I have a citrus row and this is the perfect size tree. It grows six to 10 feet tall. Obviously, I live in Houston, Texas, which is a subtropical climate. So God forbid there's another freeze. This tree should survive and thrive down here in this environment. And we have ourselves an improved Meyer lemon in the ground and ready to munch on. Absolute perfection. All right, guys, so we have the limon in the ground and the next tree I'm adding is going to be a Moringa tree. Now this is known as the drumstick tree or the tree of life. It has many vitamins, minerals, and qualities that are extremely helpful. So I'm gonna throw this in, watch it grow up, maybe take some cuttings, throw them in smoothies, and just overall infuse my life and health with some vitality through the Moringa tree. Let's plant it. All right, the Moringa olifera, olifera grows in zone nine and 10. And this dude is packed with vitamins. 
It has seven times more vitamin C than oranges. Seven. 15 times more potassium than bananas. It also has calcium, protein, iron, and amino acids. And this thing is basically just an action-packed adventure to healing a ton of diseases, ailments. And when you eat the leaves, it can definitely improve your nutrition and overall life. It's native to India, but now it's gonna be producing in my damn backyard, baby. Let's get it. All right, man, flawless. So we have the Moringa in the ground. Now for a food forest to be successful, obviously you need some flowering plants to bring in beneficial insects and pollinators. So I'm throwing in this native Tacoma plant right here and it has butamis flowers on it. I think it'll look really good. So I'm gonna throw it in behind the mulberry I previously planted, let it grow up, flower, and hopefully bring in some of my insect homies to the plant to food forest. Let's go. All right, baby. So the Tacoma stands or the Esperanza, also known as the Yellow Bell, is native to North America. Specifically, it can be grown from Texas all the way west to Arizona, zones 9 through 11, and all the way down to Argentina in South America. That's crazy. It is the larval host of the dog faced butterfly, and the flowers can be suckled on by insects and hummingbirds, which is why I planted this dude. All right, so the Tacoma stands is in the ground, and equally important to bringing in beneficial insects is having a nice color variation. As I've mentioned before, I want this to look like a tropical food forest. Forest. So I have this color guard yucca that is native to Tejas. So I think this dude will look really good somewhere in front of this kind of monochromatic color of bushes and fruit trees. Look at that. Look at the difference. Look at the pop. Oh my God. All right, man, I'm gonna get scientific real quick. This is the yucca filamentosa. Now this bad boy can grow in zones five all the way to 10. Huh? and it is natively found in sandy soils or the plains of the southeastern United States of America. This dude can spring up some giant flowers in late summer, and I ultimately just love the variegation in the color of the leaves, hence why I'm throwing it in for that tropical vibe and look. It also is a host plant for the Yucca Giant Skipper and the Kofakwi Giant Skipper. What a name, what a moth. Anyways, this dude looks good, and I can't wait to watch it grow up over the years and spring up some bright white flowers for these hummingbirds, man. Yes. All right, color guard yucca, check. Now, one fruit tree that I do want to throw on the ground is kind of like a little miracle. It's a little gift that I was bestowed on my property, and that is a mulberry tree that happens to just be growing next to this oak tree right by my backyard, like, shed area. So I'm going to try and dig this dude up and hopefully transplant him in a more desirable area. All right, so I just had to trim up some of the roots, that way new roots could grow, and hopefully this guy will transplant. Obviously, my dog Ranger is very invested in the life of this mulberry. Maybe he's gonna get some uh, beneficial drop-off when this dude fruits. But it is called the Morris Rubrar for the red American native mulberry tree, which I assume this guy is. We'll see over time, but it will provide fruit for myself, for birds, and uh, small mammals as well. And this dude can grow in zones four all the way to nine. So if you live in the United States, you can pretty much grow this baddie anywhere, part shade, full sun, or shade, it works. And all right, so we got another mulberry in the ground. And now I am throwing in a Thai plant. Hands down, one of my favorite types of tropical plants. This dude looks so good. He's covered in butamous red foliage. And I actually found a cutting in the trash, threw it in some water, and then it did grow some roots. So I'm gonna put this dude in between the blueberry bushes to add a nice pop of color and this tropical looking food forest. Let's stick them in the ground. All right, so planting this guy obviously is super easy. I literally just stuck him in the ground. But the Thai plant is called the Cordyline Fruticosa. This is hands down one of my favorite plants. Even during the Texas freeze, these dudes died to the ground and they all have sprung back up, which is awesome. I planted one in the front yard, so at its full potential, it looks absolutely astounding. And that's why I needed it just for pure aesthetics in my tropical-ish looking garden. And all righty guys, last and not least, we're throwing in another citrus tree and we are on the outside 
of my um, backyard. So yeah, dude, I need this food forest to drip all the way to the front landscaping as well. And what we're throwing in is a variegated Eureka lemon. Now the color on the leaves is crazy in and of itself, all right? Like just take a look at the variegation, but also look at the fruit. The fruit looks like watermelons, all right? And it has a nice pinkish tinge on the inside. So I'm gonna plant this dude right here, keep it at about fence height and let it grow and look good for everybody who walks on by. Looks good, brother. Hey, yes it does. I appreciate you, Clint. See, I told you guys, man, people over here dropping compliment bombs like it's nobody's business. And yes, in the backdrop, the Sago palms are sprung up with their leaves too. So yeah, if you guys haven't seen my other videos, catch up on those, but I can't wait for this Eureka lemon tree to produce fruit because it can do so all year long. And all right then, ladies and germs, that wraps up today's video. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you did, please smash the like button again. This is a new channel, so just clicking the like really will help me out exponentially. But yeah, dude, a bunch of new plants are in the ground. I can't wait to let them grow in and fully develop. I'm putting all the trees in right now, obviously, because that is one of the first steps to starting something is to get the tree layer established in the understory canopy going long and strong. You guys remember, Earth is my planet. Earth is my planet. And until next time, live the dream, eat that ice cream. Thanks for watching. I'm locked, I'm loaded, and I'm out. Peace. Leaving a bloody life by roosting And I'm in it to win it So I'm somebody that you should get used to